In this video, we'll take a look at how USB devices can be integrated with Skyhoy products. The example is the Tangent Ribble. It's a simple USB device that you can plug in to your Skyhoy product, such as the Colorfly. Some of our products, they have a USB-A port. It also includes the Blue Pill server. So there are many ways you can get your USB device networked. And having it networked means that it can basically enter into a common configuration with a product like the Colorfly. Colorfly is one of our products for shading. And if we go to the simulation tool here, you can see how Colorfly is currently operating um, an ATEM switcher and cameras from a Blackmagic design. And the uh, Tangent Ribble is connected to it. And those two together would allow you to shade black, uh, lift gamma gain in the camera. And having them connected like this is what this video is about. But let's just dial back a few steps because I want to show you um, basically how this all works and the wiki page that we have associated with the hit devices on raw panel. So raw panel is our protocol on uh, ethernet protocol for panels and the converting a USB device into a raw panel device is um, talked about on, on this page that there's like a um, actually a series of pages. So if we like go back, maybe if we just go back one page like this, we'll be lucky and see yes we have also x keys we have uh touch solutions we have a readle smart panel we have a uh, tally lamps we have uh densitron displays stream decks they can all be raw panel connected uh, in sort of the same way but the focus today will be on the hit devices i think the tangent dribble is the most exciting of these we also have the the foot switch here which is really useful because you can use that to do what we call cruise control on pc cameras all right, so the Tangent Ribble is connected to the Colorfly here and that converts it into a USB device. That requires you to install the package called X-Panel Hits. And if you do that, you see as I'm, um, yeah, okay, the lock here is not the most perfect thing, but if I disconnect it from the um, the Colorfly, you can see that it reacts to it by, by saying that the hit device with this and this serial was removed. So I will now connect it once again here. And now you see immediately it's actually finding the panel and it's apparently available on this particular port. What does that mean? Well, if we open a terminal like this, we can use Netcat or Podian Windows, Telnet, etc. It's the same things. And we take the IP address of my Colorfly, which is this one. The IP address is shown up here. And then I use the port number and I make a TCP connection to it. And then I type in list. If I type in list, it tells the panel two things. First of all, it identifies that I wanna talk ASCII. ASCII is like human communication. It is letters that we know instead of binary, which is for machines. Uh, so it gives us a, a UI like this one. Now notice as I'm rotating this encoder, I get a message that hardware component number nine sends us pulses which are positive or negative depending on my direction. If I press down the buttons, you see, oh, that's button number one, button number two, button number three, four. We get these events communicated. And if I'm moving the trackball, you see they work like encoders. One of the cool tools I want to uh, let you know about is called Raw Panel Explorer. And um, what I just did was making a direct connection to the Rebel Tangent over IP uh, through the translation of... Um, the X panel hits application that is installed on the Colorfly, which is our host for the panel. Uh, but it can actually be used from anywhere on the network. So having them network enabled also sets them free. You can access them on the, the other side of the earth if you had a VPN connection to it and so on. All right, so uh, I wanna start up, I have it downloaded myself in my downloads folder and it's called Raw Panel Explorer. And this Raw Panel Explorer, yes. So if I start this application, it opens up this UI. Let's just make it a little bit bigger. And I think also if you take Skyhoy GitHub Raw Panel Explorer, um, right there, I think you can get straight to our GitHub page, GitHub page where we have releases and these releases can be downloaded. So you have, just like I've done, and a version for, for Mac, Windows, and Linux that you can run yourself. But Raw Panel Explorer is basically looking at my network. It's finding these panels. You see the XP, XP is from external panel, underscore hits tangent ribble. So that's our ribble down here. All the other ones called SK underscore would be Skahoy panels like Blue Pills, Colorflies, Inline Sense. I don't know what else is on our company network this morning. If I connect to this one, 
you see it's it's basically actually getting a drawing of the panel and that comes out of the integration we um, call it topology and that means any application that connects to the tangent ribble is able to get this kind of uh, information out of it it's actually coming as a as a structured json um, blob here uh, data that tells you which components are found and on which XY coordinate and so on. And there's also some SVG coming along that allows you to draw that drawing. And if you click any of these buttons in this UI, Raw Panel Explorer, you will see uh, you're brought down to a topology summary. And essentially, this gives you an overview of what components are on this panel. And we, uh, you can even see the events. So um, actually, you, you see as I'm pressing buttons, you see the events are popping up on the side here. So I'm now rotating the encoder and moving the trackball. So yeah, that's useful. Um, if you go to the, and by the way, yes, uh, for our X panel hits devices, typically the out column here would be totally blank because we are, these panels are characterized by not having any feedback you can send to them. There is no LED, no display, nothing to turn on. It's just pure triggers coming from the panel, like buttons or encoders, uh, et cetera. Yes. All right. So, um, and up here, by the way, that's what I wanted to show you as well, is that you have this sort of, we call it a trigger scope. It's not so great for the trackballs because it's alternating between component 12 and 13, as you can see, or 14, 15 on the other one. But if you uh, look at it for an encoder, you see how you basically have a, a graphical view of the incoming data from it. Or if you press a button, it's like a square curve that you see. So that's Raw Panel Explorer, where you can kind of work in a raw way to understand these. And I'm telling you all this because you're likely to watch this video if you are interested in using the um, X Panel Hits converter to integrate um, panels like the um, uh, Tangent Ribble in, in your own software in some way. And also for those of you who are interested to have an understanding about what is the foundational way that panels get into Reactor. Uh, which is, of course, the uh, application most of you guys will use and which you see right here. Blank project, all right? Add a new panel, discovering on the network, finds the tangent dribble, selecting it, and it tries to find the default configuration. We have no use of that. I propose you remove it. And then you basically create a new custom configuration. We will call this test and press create. It now created a new configuration. And if I go to the configuration tab with the test configuration, I may need to press this one so that it finds the river, puts that into our view here. Now, what I can do is I can create multiple pages, just like if you actually configured your stream deck, you could have like, uh, you know, page page two, just call that create. Uh, you can, uh, there's something called transparency. And that means if you uh, choose a transparent layer, it will always use whatever is on the background, unless you put something on the layer. And if you deselect that, it will always be, you know, blocking out the, the background. We also have a shift level. So that's like adding something to broadcast people, right? But um, on the background, essentially, I can now go in here and then I could find a device. I don't have a device, so I could press add device and then search ATEM because we have a ton of ATEM switches. So just pick one of these, save, thank you. All right, so we are connected to the ATEM, back to configuration. And we were right there. I want to go to the production studio, go into camera control. I want to add like shutter speed control on this one. It already suggests that it's device ID number one, which is a good pick because that is the device ID of my ATEM that I'm working on and in configuration. Clicking this one, the input number one would be camera number one. Again, you can pick between different ones depending on which ATEM switcher you have added. Now, if I go to page two, by the way, if I click here, then I would essentially, uh, you see, it's it's free for me now to, to add something else. Like I could add color bars and, <laughs> okay. So I turn on and off color bars with an encoder. All right, uh, I could do that with a button as well. That would be fine. But on page number two, we are now dealing with color bars on the background page, clicking the same, we are on shutter speed. Okay, so that's how Reactor works, how you can use configuration with paging paradigm to have different, uh, um, parameters assigned to these if you want to go rogue and do it all yourself. But it's also possible to basically remove this in configuration and then you could pick a configuration that includes it already and then you can add it as a panel that will work together with the color fly. And that's what we have covered in a different video. And there's a lot of out of the box configuration stuff for that too. So guys, I, um, I want to show you one more thing for this because, um, and that is kind of going back to the... Um, case where you want to use the tangent dribble uh, for yourself. There's this 
field called deep config. And on this field, there will be uh, additional JSON parameters that you can uh, push in. For instance, if you want to set the resolution of the trackballs, because they are much higher than, than the outputs that we are sending. What you saw on the raw panel explorer here, uh, when I'm turning this encoder, it's a pretty coarse downscale of the uh, built-in resolution of this encoder, but that can be changed by some JSON parameters you can uh, put into this deep config field. But go to our wiki page to see how this works because it's uh, it's kind of too much to cover in detail in this video and it's uh, much better read out of a wiki page. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media if you want to stay in touch with the newest development from Skahoy.